Okay, today, friends, we are going to be making snowy mittens. So for this, you're going to need a piece of paper. Um, you can use just plain white paper if you would prefer, or if that's all you have. But if you do have any construction uh, color paper, or maybe just colored paper, uh, colored printer paper. Sometimes people have that, like printer paper that's different colors. You might want one of those just to give it sort of a fun, interesting background. Um, you're also going to want a pencil and you're going to want any type of coloring materials. So you might want um, markers, sharpies, you might want to use crayons, color pencils. Um, I'm going to be using a lot of crayons, I think, maybe some markers because I think those will look nicest for what we're doing. Um, but we will kind of go with it as we come along. So I'm going to be using this colored paper. again. You can use plain white, that will also work, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is take your hand and we're gonna put our hand down because we wanna create a mitten shape. So I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna keep it closed like this. And I'm not gonna trace my hand perfect. What I'm gonna do is trace around here and then I'm gonna trace around my hand, not right next to my fingers. Do you see how I'm creating some space around it? I'm not right next to my fingers. I'm actually going around it going around my thumb and then when I get back to my wrist that's when I'm gonna get skinny again okay so that's how I kind of did my trace and when you do that it kind of creates this really fun sort of mitten shape and I'm going to continue, make sure my hand goes all the way down and I'm gonna decide where the end of my mitten is gonna be I think it's gonna be around my wrist and then I think sometimes mittens have a little cuff so I'm gonna do another line right there Okay, so there's my mitten shape. So I have a nice mitten shape. Now, this would not be a very interesting mitten if we left it like this. So what we're going to do is divide this mitten up into some different spaces so that we can do some patterns. So I'm going to do mine with stripes. And I'm going to make sure they're nice wide stripes so I have room for some cool patterns inside. And when I get down to the mitten thumb area, Maybe I'll draw some stripes this way too. They can be whatever shapes you want though. They do not have to be stripes. You could have some other cool shapes inside here. I'm just doing some stripes on the thumb and on the main part of the mitten. All right, now we're ready to do some fun patterns. A pattern is something that you repeat over and over and over again. So maybe inside one of these spaces, I want to draw a bunch of stripes or a bunch of circles or a bunch of triangles, things like that. Now, before I do that, I want this mitten to sort of stand out from the background and not get all messed up by coloring it in right away. So I'm going to take a Sharpie, but you could take a marker, a crayon, anything you wanted to outline. So I'm going to outline my mitten. Here we go. Whoop! And if I go outside the lines, do you see how I'm outside of the lines? I didn't quite match up the line perfect when I traced it. That's okay. And that's what I definitely want to outline. I might outline these stripes too, though, actually. I think I'm going to do that. And it's okay if you go outside the pencil lines a little bit. But whatever I do now is permanent. So the pencil is erasable which is actually what I'm going to do right now is erase my extra pencil lines because I don't want any of that extra stuff showing. So again, if you have a colored paper like me, that is great. If you don't, this is totally fine to do on white paper too. In fact, it'll probably look even more bright and colorful because you won't have a colored background. I would say don't get a really dark background. You know, don't pick like a piece of black paper or something that's gonna be really hard to see on but if it's something light this could really work nicely okay so now I'm gonna jump into doing patterns like I said and I think I'm gonna start with some crayons if you actually have some construction paper crayons those are crayons that are meant to show up on dark paper um, that would be really great for a background that's colored but if you don't have that regular crayons are gonna work too so I'm gonna show you because these are regular crayons so let's do a pattern. I think in the top part, I'm gonna do some stripes. So I'm gonna take my green crayon and I'm gonna repeat stripes. 
And that looks cool, but I think I want to do a little extra. So I think I'm going to take another color and do some more stripes in between. So this is a pattern. I'm repeating a shape over and over again. And I think I'm going to make the green a little thicker and the red a little thinner. So that's kind of what I'm doing. You can do it however you want. So that's where I'm putting my first pattern. Now I'm going to do a different pattern. Maybe I'm going to do um, triangles. A bunch of triangles over and over and over again. And I'm going to do different size triangles. And they're all going to be different sizes. And they're kind of all over the place. And I think I'm going to color them in too. All right, so I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep filling each section with different patterns, different ideas over and over again until I filled up the whole mitten with some beautiful, colorful things. So watch while I do this quick, speedy version. patterned mitten all done and you can see I tried some different things a lot of things I didn't plan ahead of time I just thought about it as I went but you could also do all of this in pencil first and then go over it with whatever colors you choose so the last thing I want to do just to spice this up is to add some snowflakes in the background because I want it to look like it's snowing and maybe I'm looking at my hand to try to catch a snowflake um, you could do the same thing with the white paper, although white isn't going to show up on white paper. So you might make your snowflakes like a light blue or a dark blue to represent that they're cold if you do it on the white paper. I might still do some of that here too, but I'm going to use try to use some white crayon to see if that shows up. So I'm going to maybe put some dots all over the place to show snowflakes that are far away. If you have any white paint or a white gel pen or if you had white out, that might show up really nice on this too. Construction paper crayons, things like that. You can also draw a few things like this, little X's. So I'm doing a plus sign and then I put one extra on the side. So plus and then one little extra. So you can do that too, and that kind of makes it look like there's some snowflakes floating. And if you want to get real fancy, and I'll show you what it looks like, you could even make a paper snowflake and glue it to it so it looks like the hand actually caught one. That would be really cool. You don't have to do that, but that might be a fun extra cool touch to add. So if you are someone who thinks you want to take on that challenge, I'll have some tutorials linked on how to do some snowflakes and you can check, check it out on our classroom page and maybe try to do some that you can stick inside the hand. That would look extra, extra cool. All right, guys. So I hope you had fun making this. I had fun making with, with you and I look forward to seeing all those really cool mittens. interested in making a snowflake to go along with anything that you're working on um, especially for your little mitten that we just did um, this is a piece of computer paper really thin paper and that's really what you want to do a snowflake because otherwise it gets too too thick you can also use coffee filters which I'll have a nice little tutorial linked for how to do that but I want this to be a kind of a small snowflake if I do this whole big snowflake it's gonna be way bigger than the mitten so I want to make this snowflake a little smaller so I folded my paper in half and cut that paper in half and that's still going to be kind of a big snowflake so I'm actually going to do it one more time 
fold it in half, cut it in half, and now I've got a much smaller piece of paper, and that's going to work a lot better for my mitten to have a snowflake on it. So what I'm going to do is fold this a couple times, once, twice, and then I think that I'm going to fold it one more time. You can fold it in half, or what might be better is to take the two sides that are folded, see how they're not open on this side? They're not open at all. This side, they are open. The sides that are folded, you want to line them up with the other folded sides. So I'm going to line up together. You might need someone to help you with this part to make sure you're doing it the right way. So you don't want any of these loose pieces folded together. You want the two sides that are closed up folded together so that they're touching each other. And now it's kind of a funky shape. Now I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut this into a round shape. So if you need to, you can always draw out where you're planning on cutting first. So I'm going to like make kind of like a curve shape, making sure the point is facing the bottom. And I'll know that that's the part I want to cut off because I want to make my snowflake round. So I'm going to go like this. Make sure you have some scissors that are safe for you to use. And now I'm ready to cut this snowflake up into lots of little bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some little notches. Get closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not drawing anything first. I'm doing some on one side. And I'm turning paper as I go. I don't really have a plan. I don't know what this is going to look like. So I did a few notches on one side and now I'm going to do some on the other side too. Just a few little bits and pieces. Don't really have a plan. But I'm going to see how this turns out when I open it up. That's kind of part of the fun of snowflakes. Sometimes they turn out amazing. Sometimes they turn out eh. And then you start over again. I'm even going to do something here in the middle. I'm going to cut off this tip. And maybe over here I'll do something even. The tippy tap. You just want to make sure you don't cut fully across it. From one side to another. Because that can really make a mess. And like make your snowflake fall apart. Which we don't want. So I did a lot of notches. You don't have to do that many. But you can see how many I did. I have lots of my little pieces at the bottom. You want to make sure you're working on top of something that will catch them all so that we can throw them away easily. Now I'm ready to open up my snowflake. So let's start opening and see what it looks like. Very cool so far. Ooh, it's looking nice. All right. Ooh, I like that. Now you can see that that's a pretty big snowflake still, but it's still a pretty good size. That should fit my glove. And if you're looking at it saying, you know what, that's still too big for me, then you can take this paper and fold it in half and cut it and make it even smaller to make even a tinier snowflake. Or, like I said, you don't have to put any snowflake. You can just have a nice, cool mitten. But if you wanted to, you could tape it right in the middle here or glue it. Um, I wouldn't glue all of it. I would just glue the middle part. So just a little bit of glue there so the edges still pop up off of your paper. So it really looks like a snowflake that landed on your mitten. So if you guys want to do that, that's optional. You don't have to, but it could be a fun extra thing to do if you have some time on your hands. All right. Happy art making.